In this series of videos, we're going to be looking at problems that involve friction. And specifically, we're going to be looking at dry friction. There are many different forms of friction, but we're going to be looking at a model of friction called dry friction. And I'm going to use this model of dry friction to analyze the equilibrium of rigid bodies subject to, to this force. And to introduce a subject, friction is the force of resistance acting on a body which pre prevents us from moving a body, uh, getting it something to slip along the floor. And the force always acts relative to the motion. So what I have drawn here is, imagine we've got a box and it's sat on the ground. And the interface between the two materials, the ground and the box, uh, has a certain level of roughness. And because of this level of roughness, when you try to push the box, it, it doesn't initially want to move. And if you keep increasing and increasing this force, eventually you'll get to a force where this box will then start to slip. And this limiting point where the box starts to slip is what we're going to look at in particular. But we'll also look at situations where the friction force doesn't lead to slipping, but eventually maybe that this box starts to overturn first. And it'll probably overturn around the corner here. And you'll end up with the box tipping around like this. But you still need friction on this front of the box to be able to flip it over. Otherwise it will just slip. The whole box will just slip in a rigid body motion to the right hand side. So we're considering this box. It's got a weight of W. It's sat on this rough surface. And we're subjecting this box to an external force that is attempting to get this box into motion. And as a result of this, we're going to draw the forces that are acting on this block. So I'll redraw the block. And we have the force P still on this block. We have the weight W. And this weight W will lead to a set of forces and these will be quite uneven depending on this level of roughness between the surface. So we can almost draw a curve through this. And also there will be another set of forces. Let's call these F or delta F just to show that they're different. And these set of forces are the friction forces. These forces here are the normal forces. And we're going to actually then go slightly further. These normal forces that are all pushing down into the ground can all be summed together. And we can have an equal and opposite reaction from the ground back into the box. Likewise, all of these forces of friction, which are variable as we go along the surface, can be lumped together into one single force term just by adding them together. So we'll draw that situation where we have this box. So here's our box again. And we'll draw the free body diagram for this box. So we have at the centroid of this box, we have a weight W. We have the force P. We have the normal force, the reaction from the floor back onto the box. And we've lumped into it all of the friction forces along this bottom surface between the box and the floor into a big single force F. And finally, just to complete the free body diagram, the point of action of this normal force, we will be acting at some distance away from the line of action of this weight of the box. And this distance we're calling X. And we don't know what that distance is at this moment. Okay, so now we have a free body diagram of the box that we're considering. Let's have a look at the sum of the forces in the X direction. So taking the sum of the forces in the X direction, 
we only have these two forces on the system and you can see that they're going in opposite directions so you could write that F equals P we can sum the forces as well in the Y direction and we can see that the weight must be equal to the reaction coming from the floor so N the reaction from the floor the normal force is equal to the weight and finally we can take moments and we're going to choose to take moments about this point A here and take a moment about this point we can show that so moments about A we show that N times X is equal to P multiplied by the distance to where the force is applied and we'll call this H uh, so it's P times H I'm going to use this for situations we're going to try and work out does this equation cause us more problems so that the box can slide or does this overturning of the box govern the behavior but before that we're going to introduce what we call the dry friction model and it's very important to understand what we mean by a model um, and what we mean by model is that it approximates a real life for practical purposes. It's not necessarily 100% real, but it's very good for the analyses that we want to apply. So I'm going to draw some axes. So we've got on a y axis, we've got the friction force F. And on the x axis, we have the force P. So this is the force P on this free body diagram, but it's trying to get this box to move along. So, again, looking at this equation of forces in the X direction, and you can imagine, you can start applying a bit of load on a box, nothing happens. And we continue to keep loading the forces on the box, until we get to a certain critical point and then all of a sudden the box slips now if you've experienced this situation yourself you're pushing something on the floor the moment that you get the box to slip it actually slides relatively easy compared to how hard it was to get it to slide and what happens then is the force reduces dramatically while it's in motion so we have a critical point here, which is, we'll call it FS, so static friction. This is the force it took to get a static box moving. And this value here, we're going to call FK, and we're using K for kinematic, is the force when the box is in motion, the resistance force from the box. And at any time, up until the point where the box starts to slip, so anywhere on the curve all the way up, the friction force will be equal to the applied force P because the box is in equilibrium still. So armed with this model now, the model for dry friction states that that the the limiting friction force fs to get the box into motion is equal to some function of the normal force so you can imagine when you're trying to move a box the normal force or the weight of the box makes it harder and harder to slide along the floor so a, a nice light box slides really easy but a heavy box is really hard to get into motion and we can go into even more specific detail that we say that the limiting force fs limiting friction force 
is equal to some constant mu s times n, where mu s is something that we can determine uh, from experiments for a given interface between two materials. And we can also state we're not doing much with this kinematic friction on this course, but we can also have a similar model for this limiting force of kinematic friction, which equals mu k mu k times n, so also proportional to the normal force or the weight of the object that you're trying to get into motion. So for a given two materials in, contra in contact with one another, like we have above, we would like to have an experimental method where we could determine it. And the way that we could go about determining this coefficient of friction is if we have our box, and we place it on an incline, what we can do so maybe this is hinged at this point, is we can keep increasing this incline until we get to an angle such that the box starts to slide down the hill. And the angle at the moment that the box starts to slide is called theta s. And we could draw a free body diagram for the situation here, and so we draw the free body diagram of just this box on its own. And try to keep relatively the same angle of the box. And so now we have the weight force that hits the center of the box, that's W, always pointing downwards. We have the friction force and this always acts along the surface, so it is acting along this direction here. And we'll call that Fs, that's the force just as we start to get movement. And there will be a reaction force between the block and the incline. And we'll call this reaction force N, so it's the normal force between the block and the incline. And at the moment, We've drawn this in our global X and Y coordinate systems. And if we do that, this angle here is the angle theta S. For analysis of this system, we have we can resolve the forces into these global X and Y directions. But sometimes we can even find it even more convenient that we define a new set of axes. And let's call this Y dash and X dash. And if we, in doing so, FS acts parallel to the X dash direction and the normal force N acts parallel to our new Y, di y dash direction. And therefore, we can write our equilibrium equations in this new coordinate system. So at the point where this block would be just about to slip, we can take the have a look at the equilibrium of this block. So we take the sum of the forces in the y dash direction. And looking in the y dash direction, so going this way, we can see that we have n pointing upwards. But W pointing downwards at an angle of cos feet cos of theta s and for equilibrium for so just before it about to slide, this is just about equal to zero. And we do the same in the x dash direction. Some of the forces in the x dash direction now, so we have Going in the positive x dash direction, we have the friction force Fs. 
and going in the negative x dash direction we have the, a component of the weight force and that is w times the sine of theta s and again that is equal to zero and we can finally rearrange some of these equations so we could insert but fs now and let's do that is equal to phi so mu s times n from our model of dry friction and we can get these two equations together and rearrange them in terms of mu s the quantity that we'd like to know and we get that mu s equals w times the sine of theta s divided by w times the cos of theta s so we have sine divided by cos and w divided by w gets us to this mu s this proportionality between the normal force and the limiting friction force is equal to tan of the angle theta s of the incline at the moment where this box here just wants to start slipping so for the remainder of this course we're going to go through some example problems where we have situations like this box and we'll show one of the situations we're going to come to where we have a box on a rough surface we might have a force p applied to it the box has a weight of w the force p might be at a height h we know the width of the box and maybe even the force p is actually applied at an angle so it has an x component and a y component on there and we're going to work out whether this box as we keep increasing this force p whether the box will slide or so whether it will slide in a rigid body motion to the right hand side or whether the whole box will tip itself over and we're going to do that through a number of examples and tutorial problems that we'll work through together.